Hi everyone! In this video, we're going to talk about signs, meaning positive or negative, that trigonometric function values take depending on angles and in which quadrants those angles terminate. So to help us analyze all that, we're going to use the following definitions of trigonometric functions. Remember, these definitions involve coordinates of a point that lies on the terminal side of an angle and the coordinates are x and y, and here they are. y represents the y-coordinate, x represents the x-coordinate, and of course they are also here as well in tangent, and then r is the radius. It's radius of a circle that's centered at the origin and also contains that point. So what do we know about this value? Well, we know that the radius is always positive. I'll write that, it's important, always positive. However, coordinates of points can be either positive or negative, and it depends on which quadrant that point is, right? And let's refresh that. So there are four quadrants. Q1, quadrant 1, quadrant 2, 3, and 4. Now, what can we say about coordinates of points in each quadrant? Well, in quadrant 1, both coordinates are always positive, right? Quadrant 1 corresponds to the positive x-axis and positive y-axis. In quadrant 2, the x-coordinates are negative and the y-coordinates are positive. It, in quadrant 3, x-coordinates are negative and y-coordinates are negative. And then finally in quadrant 4, the x-coordinates are positive and then y-coordinates are negative. Okay, so that's how the signs play out depending on the quadrant. And going back to my definitions, now I can say the following. So first of all, I will always look at the ratio, right? And for sine and cosine, in each ratio, the denominator will always be positive. And remember that when we take positive number and divide by positive, the result is positive. But when we take negative number and divide by positive, the result is negative. And that means that the sine, meaning positive or negative, um, of the sine or cosine function values will always depend on the coordinates, either on the y-coordinate for sine or on the x-coordinate for x. So if y-coordinate is positive, then sine function value is going to be positive. If x-coordinate is negative, then cosine function value is going to be negative. So you simply need to associate sine with y-coordinate and cosine with the x-coordinate. And that means that if angle terminates in quadrant 1, both sine and cosine function values of that angle will be positive. Cosine is going to be positive and then sine is going to be positive. For angle that terminates in quadrant 2, cosine value will always be negative and then sine will always be positive. For any angle that terminates in quadrant 3, cosine and sine, both of them will be negative. And in quadrant 4, for any angle, their cosine value is positive and their sine value is negative, like that. And now let's talk about tangent. So whether tangent positive or negative um, is going to depend on both x and y coordinates. So let's look into each quadrant. So in quadrant 1, or angle that terminates in quadrant 1, it's tangent. It's y over x, right? y is positive and x is positive. So when I'm dividing two positive numbers, I get a positive result. So tangent is positive in quadrant 1. How about quadrant 2? In quadrant 2, we're going to um, take the positive y value and put it over negative x value. So positive over, over negative is a negative result. In quadrant 3, both y and x are negative. So what happens when we divide negative by negative? 
we get something positive, right? So tangent is positive in quadrant three. And finally, quadrant four is going to be negative y over positive x. Negative over positive is negative, like that. So these are the signs for tangent. And we can see a pattern, right? What is that pattern? In the quadrants where signs for both coordinates are the same, meaning both positive or both negative, tangent value is going to be positive. And in the quadrants, which is 2 and 4, where x and y coordinates have different signs, like that or like that, tangent will be negative. Right? So that's how we can remember that. Well, these are the major three trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. That's how signs play out depending on where angle terminates. But we have three more. We have also reciprocal functions. How about their signs? Well, there's a good news, and that news is the following. Reciprocals always have the same sign. For example, from algebra, if I have 5, its reciprocal is 1 over 5. Both are positive. If I have fraction negative 2 thirds, its reciprocal is negative 3 halves. So they're both negative. That means that Knowing all that, or remembering all that, or understanding all that, is technically enough for determining signs of the reciprocal functions. So if I know that, let's say, uh, cosine is negative in quadrant 3, well, it means that its reciprocal, which is secant, is also negative. If I know that tangent is negative in quadrant 4, well, it means its reciprocal cotangent is also negative. So remembering that reciprocals always have the same signs is all we need to determine signs of the reciprocal functions. Now, let's do a few examples. We will need to identify the quadrant for an angle theta if we know that sine of angle theta is greater than zero. Remember, greater than zero, it means it's positive. And secant of theta is less than zero. So this is how we're going to think about this problem. Let's do one clue at a time. So first, we know that sine of theta is positive or greater than zero. Remember that by the definition of the sine function, it's y over r. Sine is associated with the y-coordinate. So if sine is greater than zero, it means that in that quadrant, y must be greater than zero. So in which quadrants is y greater than zero? Well, y is greater than 0 is in quadrant 1 and it, in quadrant 2. So that clue tells me that that angle has to be either in quadrant 1 or in quadrant 2. But we also have another clue. Let's work with that second clue. So here we have secant. Secant of theta is less than 0. Secant is a reciprocal function. It's reciprocal of cosine right? So if secant is less than zero, then cosine of theta has to be less than zero. That means that cosine of theta is less than zero. Now, cosine, by the definition, it's x over r. So remember, it's sine, positive or negative, is associated with the x-coordinate. So if cosine of theta is, greater, is less than zero, that means that x value has to be less than zero in that quadrant. Well, in which quadrants do we have x values less than zero? This is the x coordinate. Here we have negative x values, right? So that corresponds either to quadrant two or quadrant three. So quadrant two or quadrant three, like that. And now we just have to pick quadrant that um, satisfies both conditions. And obviously, you know, here on the picture, it's more clear. That's where both conditions were satisfied. So in, we can also see quadrant two here and quadrant two here. So the answer is those both conditions um, are satisfied when angle terminates in quadrant two. Let's do one more example like that. So here we need to identify the quadrant for an angle theta if tangent of theta is greater than zero, meaning positive, and cosecant of theta is less than zero, meaning negative. Okay, let's start with the first clue. 
tangent of theta is greater than zero. Let's think for which quadrant um, it works. So that's how I'll think about it without even like looking into my notes. Um, tangent is y over x, right? And in order for this quotient to be greater than zero or positive, this is how signs in this quotient should play out. It should be positive over positive or negative over negative, right? Either both of them are positive either, or both of them are negative. Well, in which quadrants that happens where x and y are both positive or x and y are both negative? Well, that's quadrant one, right? That's where we have both x and y coordinates positive. And the second case is quadrant three. That's where both coordinates are negative. So from the first clue, I got those two options. Let's see what the second clue will tell us. So cosecant of theta is less than zero or negative. Cosecant is the reciprocal function. So I start by connecting it with the original function. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So that means that sine, and remember reciprocals have same signs, meaning positive or negative. So if cosecant is less than zero, sine of angle theta has to be less than zero. Now, sine function is associated with the y-coordinate. And if sine function is negative, then the y-coordinate should be less than zero. In which quadrants do we have negative y-coordinates? So here's the y-axis. And that's where we have the negative y coordinates, right? And that means that they correspond to quadrant three or quadrant four. So from here, I conclude that it's quadrant three or quadrant four. And in which quadrant both conditions are satisfied? Well, it's quadrant three. In quadrant three, and we can see it here as well, both conditions are satisfied. So that means that angle theta must terminate in quadrant three. So that is the way to analyze signs, meaning positive or negative, of trigonometric functions.